Come on. Well, thank you. Y'all are so kind. Amen. You may be seated. Um, I want to start it off like this because this is my first time being here. So I want to start it off like this. If today I was your son standing here and about to do the service, we'd have a different service here today. Yeah. If I was your brother, we'd have a different service. If I was your cousin, if I was your long lost brother, we'd have a different service here today. And you know, some of y'all might not get like this, but if I was your son or your brother or your, or, or your uncle, you'd be like, oh, I can't wait to see what he does, you know? You'd be all excited, because why? Man, you get to see your son, your dad, your brother, Preaching the gospel. And watch this. You prayed for him for years. Oh, get saved, man. You need to get saved. That's what means that means. You need to get saved. Well, here I am. I'm saved. I'm in front of you today. Hey, come on. Come on. So this is kind of like an introductory to our ministry and what we do. Uh, 28 years ago, the Lord called me to do missions work. And 28 years ago, I, 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 I just got saved a couple years prior to that and um, my life was out of control. But when I got saved, God gave me a mandate. And he said, Eddie, I, I want you to go back to the places where I found you. And so I, we started a missions organization called Conviction Ministries. And we went to our first prison. One turned to two, two turned to 50. 50 turned into 100. 200, the Lord called me. He said, Eddie, I want you to quit your job and do this full time. You know, I don't know if you know this or not, but I got a wife and six children. I mean, I, I got attitude every day of the week, and Lord, give me rest on the seventh day. Thank you, Jesus, on that one. Amen. But that's, that, that's a hard pill to swallow when you go to your wife and say, you know, the Lord called me to go full-time, you know, and uh, I'm about to step out in full-time ministry on Monday. Hello? Yeah. I've never done anything like this in my life. The Lord said, Eddie, I, I don't want you on the table. You know what that means? You see, the table, we, we see the table stand on the table. You, there, there's, I, I can see the edges. I can go all the way to the edge. I mean, I can even dip over the edge. And the Lord said, Eddie, I don't want you on the table. I want you to jump off the table. And I said, man, if I jump off the table, who's going to catch me? He said, that's exactly right. He said, I want to be your supplier. I want to catch you. I, I, I want to build something if you'll just uh, trust me. And so 20, 22 years ago, we stepped out in full-time ministry. We've been doing this for 22 years now, full-time ministry. Just in the last seven years, we've seen over a little over half a million people incarcerated. And out of that half a million people, we had 20,000 accept Christ. And I mean, I'm talking about they accepted Christ and they changed. You see, my life was a whole lot like them. I never had the gospel growing up. At five years old, I was on the corner hanging out with the gangs. And I know it sounds, I'll try to keep it PG because I know there's kids here. But um, I started doing drugs at that age. My mother abandoned me. You know, that was, that was pretty hard to swallow. And my father, he took me in when I was 12 years old. I was facing six years. And my father took me in, and he took me from New York all the way down to Montgomery, Texas. <laughs> Montgomery, Texas. I, I was facing six years at 12 years old. They had to put me away until I was 18, and they gave me a, an option. Go to your, with your dad or go, go to prison. And I said, I'm, I'm going with my dad. Yeah. It's a pretty no-brainer right there. I showed up in Montgomery, Texas, and guess what? <laughs> We're in the woods. I didn't know, I, hello, I didn't know what woods were, I, hello. And my first experience, when I woke up in the morning, amen, there was a cow mewing at my window. I ain't never seen a cow. And I had no idea that a cow could take its tongue and put up underneath its nose like that on both sides. I, I was disgusting. I went to Montgomery School. I, 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 I failed all three years in seventh grade. Yeah, I sure did. I got straight ass. I turned them all into bees. Went home and told my dad, look, I got all bees, Dad. He was so proud of me. I remember that, man. So proud of me. And see, my father was a physical abuser, and I was abused by my father for many years in my young adult life. I was very confused, sniffing gasoline and paint thinner and getting my hands on anything that I could to escape the pain that I was going through. I didn't know who Jesus was, and nobody was telling me about Jesus. You know Jesus, you should be telling somebody about Jesus. And so there I was at the age of 23, strung out on drugs, living in the streets. My life was ruined, chaos. And Jesus stepped into my cell. And he said to me, Eddie, if you give me your life, 
I'll take you places that nobody could take you. And I remember surrendering my life that day, and I gave my life to Jesus. And let me tell you something, my life changed. I was transformed. I, I, you, know, you know how I know I'm saved? I ain't robbed nobody in 30 years. Come on, somebody. I ain't done that. I ain't done it. I ain't done it. There's a fire that's inside my bones that I, I, I can't shut up. There's something inside of me that, you know what, it convicts me when I do something wrong. I don't, I don't need somebody to tell me I'm doing wrong. I got the Holy Spirit. He leads and guides me. So there I was saved. They let me out. I think I got out of the movies either. They let me out, and I got out, and all of a sudden I was like, okay, God, what do we do now? He says, I want you to preach the gospel. What's that about? All I know is music. My whole life is music. I thought I was going to be a big rock star, you know? Yeah. And he said, you are a rock star, but you're the kingdom on, and on your rock. Wow. And I said, okay, Lord. So I went to my first church, and they said, can you sing? I was like, yeah, I can sing. And they're like, do us a song. I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah, we're loving good. We don't sing like that. We do not, we do not sing like that. Like, how do y'all sing? Thy Lord, thy God, thy kingdom come. That's why you've seen it and run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm not that saved, man. <laughs> I am not that saved. And I learned a long time ago that I'm not going to put on Saul's uh, armor for what God called me to do. And so I had to get in my lane. Talking about that. Dude. I had to get in my lane and I had to do what God called me to do. Right. And 28 years later, man, we're still doing the same thing. People ask us all the time, you're still doing the same thing 28 years later? Yeah, I sure am. And I'm loving it, too. Amen. I'm in love with what I do. I don't know if you're in love with what you do, but I'm in love with what I do. I love Jesus. Amen. I love you. Hey, what this? Oh, you're Pentecostal. I ain't Pentecostal. I'm excited that Jesus saved me. Hello, somebody. Amen. I don't know what any of that stuff means. Baptist, Lutheran. I don't know nothing about that. All I know is I met Jesus and it changed my life. Give me a beautiful bride, six children, and that. I mean, I'm very grateful for what God's done for me. My music, I started writing music, got my first record deal, got music hits all over the radio. It's been a blessing, written four books, amen. It's just been, it's just been I'm working on a new book right now called Dare to Dream. Yeah. That's what we need to do again. We need to dream, amen. And so it's big block letters on a green book that says Dare to Dream, and then itty bitty tiny letters. You can you know, need a magnifying glass, amen, to read it. And it's going to say, when they say no. Yeah. I had a dream 10 years ago. The Lord came to me and said, Eddie, I want you to build a college. I go, what? A college? Are you kidding me? I said, no, I'm not joking. So I stepped out and believed that God told me to build a college for four things. Building men for successful living, developing disciples, launching leaders, and affecting nations. And I trusted God, and watch this, 10 years later, God was true to his word. December 13th of this year, we had our first graduates from our college, amen, going into the mission field. I'm big on missions. I love missions. I think it's one of the biggest, greatest gifts that God has ever given me to evangelize and missionary uh, and do work in the, in, in the states, amen. Now, people say, do you ever go out of the country? No, they're not yet. Right, they don't think they're going to let me out. Come on, somebody. <laughs> But I tried, the Lord told me to. Because that's just my attitude. God tells me to do something, I don't care what people tell me, I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. He tells me something, I'm going to do it. If he, tells me, if he tells me to dance at Walmart, hey, somebody, I'm going to dance at Walmart. <laughs> Amen? If that's what he tells me to do. So I got a few songs for you. I hope you like my music. If, if you don't like my music, I'll just go ahead and preach. And I don't care if you like my preaching. I hope I offend people when I preach. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I think I think preaching without offensiveness is probably not preaching at all. I, I think the gospel is pretty, pretty clear about it. it's pretty offensive. Yeah. You know, when you tell somebody that they're a sinner, that's pretty offensive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But nowadays they go, oh, they got problems. No, they got problems. They got sin. Yeah. That's just what it is. It's not problems. It's just sin, and it needs to be addressed. It needs to be dealt with by the blood of the Lamb. Right. So I'm do this first song for you called Altar of Exchange, and uh, it's, it's a big hit. Uh, matter of fact, it was number one in India. I was like, what? India? Why India? I live in the United States, you know? But I, I, I couldn't imagine that on a Sunday morning, what that was like on a Sunday morning. Can you imagine that? Oh my gosh, I've got media, I've got on the radio. Lord, Jesus, Lord, very, very good song. Yeah, very good. 
Mari contoh. Iblis ni sama tak boleh buat dia baik sebenarnya nanti kita bagi dia bot jadi six two. But I wrote this song because I saw the altars at churches being removed. And I even went to a church where they said that the leaders were not allowed to come to the altar and get prayed for. They can go to this little room over here in the corner because if they saw the leaders at the altar at the church, they think something's wrong with the leaders and they'd leave the church. Well, my argument for that was, uh, I think we need to see the leaders at the altar at the church. So let me play this song. Hopefully you won't leave when I play the music. Sometimes people leave. <laughs> They're like, he's crazy, man. Yeah, I'm not crazy when you call me up 3 o'clock in the morning because your son's high on drugs. Right, yeah. And your son needs help. Yeah. And he won't listen to anybody, but he'll call my phone at 3 o'clock in the morning and talk to me, and I'll get him in some place, and I'll get him help in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I'm not crazy then. I tell people I wrote my first book, I'm the earwax of the body of Christ. That's what I wrote. I'm the earwax. Nobody likes me. They don't like me when I come out. But man, I'm, I'm very effective. Because without the earwax, you cannot hear. And so the body of Christ, every member is effective. Every member is important. And I tell people this all the time. It doesn't matter what they look like. Well, you know, this guy came in our church. He had purple hair. He's got tattoos all over the place. And he's just crazy kind of a guy. Give him my phone number. <laughs> Next time he comes, I'd love to go with him. Hang out with him. Not, not, not preach to him, but but be a friend to him. Because you know what? His whole entire life, he's been hated by the world. And he needs to see the very thing that Jesus did when he came. Jesus didn't come doing this. Jesus came doing this. And love, love covers a multitude of sin. I'm going to tell you something. Love will attract people that, watch this, are not attractive at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you have that neighbor or somebody you don't like. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Love them. Just love him. So today, I want you to treat me as if I'm your son here today. Treat me as if I'm your dad. Good. Treat me as if I'm your uncle. Let me tell you something. We'll have church tonight. I'll guarantee you we'll have some church. Because you won't be like in your head going, oh, that can't be this guy. Pastor report this guy. He's just crazy and stuff. No, you'll be like, that's my, that's my daddy right there. I'm my uncle right there. I'm my cousin right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so glad he got saved. Hello. So I'll play a song for you. Y'all like me so far? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Here we go. Has anybody told you all about Jesus? Yeah. How he suffered on that cross? So we can be saved at the altar exchange. Beautiful place. Yeah, he gave his life. We got praise at the altar exchange. Where his blood ran out and he covered.
My children really had grown up on the telephone, but I was always there on the telephone. But I was always away from them, and uh, it, was, it, it, it was difficult. But the, the Lord called me to do this, and I, I really believe that He did call me to do this. And I got a lovely bride, and she's awesome. And so I'm driving down this road, and I hear a voice, and this voice says to me, "I'm gonna kill you here on these streets. You're gonna die all alone without your family." Now that was pretty intimidating when you're five foot four. Hello. But then uh, I said, well, hold on a second. If I can hear you talking to me, that means I'm not alone. But you see, your job is to try to make me feel like I'm alone, but the Bible says that in, his we in my weakness, he is made strong. And I didn't understand that for a while until I understood this. What was my weakness? My weakness was I felt like I was alone because I'd been abandoned by my mother. And so in my weakness, I had to find a scripture to overcome my weakness. So I found Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I took that scripture. Where did I pick that scripture? I put that scripture in the back of my van. He says, Som somebody give this guy a high five. <laughs> well, I put that scripture where? I put it in my weakness. Where that voice was telling me that I was alone. And that scripture became what? My strength. So I'm no longer weak in that area of my life. I, ne I, never, I never had battled with being alone ever since that day. Good. And I went home that day, and I, well, a couple weeks later, and I said, you know what, God? I'm going to write an anthem about, because I know there's a lot of people in this room here today, whether you want to admit it or not, but you've gone through being feeling like you're alone. It's the truth. It's a ploy of the enemy to make us feel like we're alone. We're not alone. i got news for you. There's a God, amen, in heaven. And watch this. He's right here with us here tonight. And let me tell you something. We are never, ever going to be alone. But I can tell you this much. Jesus is the only person on the planet to experience alone. Oh, let me help you. Let, let, let me help you. Let, let, let me help you. You see, Jesus knew that we could not even handle being actually alone. So Jesus is up on the cross, and what happens? Jesus says, Father, why have you forsaken me? You see, it was the most alone feeling that you could possibly ever have is to be alone without God. And God, Jesus knew that, that we couldn't handle that. So he said, what? I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you, so you'll never have to feel what I felt. Yeah. So let me get to this song. I'll play it. And we'll do a couple more songs. And they'll do a little bit upbeat stuff. I don't know. Y'all no, like some country music up in here? Ooh, a lot of I got country shit, man. It was big, man. When, 
number 21 in the country chart. Hey, Amen. It's awesome, man. I'm like, man, I'm not even country, dude. <laughs> I think they're doing drugs in Nashville, man. I'm serious, man. It was seriously bad. I was like, man, uh-uh. This song here is called Not Alone. Now watch this. When I got out, I prayed for 12 years that my mom and my dad would get back together again and I'd have a family. That I'd be able to sit around a table and eat a meal with my family. Never had that. 12 years I prayed every day, seeking the Lord's face. You're the God of reconciliation and reconcile this. My mother lived in New York. My dad lived in Texas. And guess what the Lord did? He brought both of them down an the aisle just like this, and I got to marry my mom and dad back again. I got to sit at that table with my mom and dad. Watch this. I got to lead my mother to Christ. Oh, y'all are with me. And then, then my father, he, he, he taught me one day. He said, I was born a Christian. I said, Dad, you was born a liar. He said, what? I said, Dad, you were born a liar. You were born a sinner. He said, man, son. You don't understand. I said, Dad, watch this. If you's a Christian, then how come you never told me about Jesus? How come you watched me in all the mess that I was in and never gave me the answer that could get me out of it? I said, you aren't a Christian, Dad. You were a heathen and you was a sinner and you need to get right with Jesus. Well, he didn't like that answer. Hello, somebody. But he was about to die one day. And they took him in the hospital and they said, buddy, you might not get off this table. I grabbed my little four-foot mother, amen, she's about this big, amen. And I said, Mama, she's a spitfire of Jesus now. I said, Mama, you need to walk inside there. You need to tell that man. He need to get seen. Because if he dies without Jesus, Mama, he ain't going to heaven. And that little spitfire woman of mine, yeah, oh, Lord, she went inside there and she gave him some Jesus. And that dude, he accepted Jesus that day. And he, he really accepted Jesus. He got saved. Come on, somebody. Now, both of them in heaven, and they're waiting for me to get there. And I'm sure that they got some stories. Come on, somebody. Right. But I will never be alone, and either will you. Here we go. I tell people it's like angels are all around us, right? You know what I'm saying? Angels. I'm not alone. Every beat of my heart's beating because of you, I'm not alone. Don't let me feel now, get in the way. Cause this darkness wants you to think you're alone. And maybe you are sitting in a cell, or maybe they are signing. Come on. 
good night long. And oh, by the way, I got the Son of God. Good night alone, and I got the Holy Spirit, and I will never ever be alone. Thank you, I lost so time. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll try to do that tomorrow night. We'll try to do it tomorrow night, man. Um, uh, this is, I got a new CD out, and then I, uh, I've written quite a few of them. I, 45 CDs I, I have out. Uh, nobody's counting except for me, but uh, I got 45. <laughs> and um, uh, this is my 45th CD that I'm about to play here tonight. It's, it's called it's, it, it's called Not a Perfect Christian. <laughs> Good, I mean, my wife calls me perfect, but you know, hey, I, you know, so I take that. You know, so I take that. Right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I just told you today, I said, honey, if you, if you, if you just a little bit faster, I'll have a perfect wife, right? I mean, never mind. I mean, y'all don't understand it, man. You know, you know but anyway, I'm, I got a new CD out. I, I want to just play a couple songs off of it. And I want to play the song for you called The Valley. See, I was having a mountaintop experience, man. I was excited, man. I was, I, I was in it, man. The Lord said to me one day, he said, I, I don't want you on the mountain. I want you in the valley. I said, well, I don't want the valley. I want the mountaintop. He said, but the mountaintop, you're always celebrating. But in the valley is where you're crying out to me. In the valley is when you walk the floors of your house because nobody can help you at 3 o'clock in the morning, praying unto me, seeking my face. I got on my knees that day and I said, Lord, keep me in the valley, man. I don't ever want to have that mountaintop experience. The only mountaintop experience that I want to have is when we get to the real true mountain of God. But until then, he can keep you anywhere he wants to keep you because I'm fine with that. Amen? Amen. So, this song's called The Valley. Excited, man. He was like, man, look at this dude's crazy. <laughs> In everybody's family, there's always that one crazy guy. Yeah, I'm the one for you, like, man. The one in your family right here, man. You know? I'm the crazy one, man. You know? But watch this. You call me to pray. You call me to help. You call me to hook up with somebody. I mean, I'll lock arms with them and take something I won't let go. I'll be like a bulldog, man. I'm a praying man of God. I love to pray. I love to pray for people. I think that's the best gift that God has ever given any of us here is that we have the ability to pray for somebody in Africa. Unlimited in our prayer. This song's called The Valley. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Try to find the ladder Thinking I did go 
many of y'all like puzzles? How many of y'all like puzzles? How many of y'all ever put a puzzle together and couldn't find the last piece? How many of you are blaming your children, man, and the garbage can and the box? Come on, sir. And you can't do nothing with that puzzle because why? That piece is missing. That piece is missing. See, Jesus is the piece to our puzzle. And until that piece is in this puzzle, I'm nothing but broken pieces. So I wrote the song called Broken Man. Of my new CD. I'm just trying to sell a new CD tonight, you know what I'm saying? Not, not a perfect Christian is the name of the CD, but the song right here is called Broken Man. Here we go. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, they, were, they were professional fishermen who fished all night long and didn't catch one fish. Right. I'm sure that there was a lot of camp or, you know, conversations that night on the boat about, about how they couldn't catch nothing. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. Oh, hold on. Y'all ain't with me, huh? <laughs> I got something for y'all. I got to look for it. Here it is. I, I found it. <laughs> what does that say right there? Amen. When it goes up, you say? Amen. When it comes down, you say? On a seek. Can y'all handle that? I got mama right in there. Lord Jesus. Should have took up the love offering right after that, Pastor. You worked really good. Here we go. It goes up, you say. Comes down on his teeth. All right, here we go. So uh, all the technology that they, that, you know, that they used, they, man, wasn't good enough. Whatever technology that they had back then, it wasn't good enough. And Proverbs 3, 6 says, Lean not on the arm understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. John chapter 5, verse 6. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd, amen, coming towards him, he said to Philip, now watch what he says to Philip. He says, uh, where shall we buy bread, amen, for these people to eat? Uh-oh. That's a setup right there. Here we go. And he says to him, uh, he asked them this only to do what? Anybody know? To test him. For he had already had in mind, underline this in your Bible, he already had in mind what he was going to do. Oh, y'all are good. I'm, I'm trying to tell you something. Now. God already had a plan, amen. But he was waiting for what? For somebody to acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Here we go. And now, uh, in verse 7, Philip answered him and he said, uh, it would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for this for each person to have a bite. And another disciple spoke up and said, hey, uh, he shouldn't have said anything, right? I mean, at this point, uh, he, he spoke up and he said, uh, uh, hey, 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 there's not enough. Now, what's amazing is, is this. They didn't acknowledge who Jesus was, but you know who Jesus is, right? He's the bread of life. Amen. They had the bread of life sitting right there in front of them, but they didn't acknowledge him. Yeah, very interesting. Now, y'all y'all, y'all know the story, amen, about the 5,000 that were fed, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine talking to Jesus after that? But I can imagine Peter, when Jesus came up to the boat and said, uh, you, know, you know, fish off the other side of the boat. I can just imagine, you know, Jesus, you go ahead and preach it, and you know, we're, we're, you know, we'll fish. <laughs> Same thing I think Philip was saying to Jesus when Jesus was standing there, the bread of life. I think Philip was saying, hey, look, man, all we got is this kid, amen. He's got a little bit of fish, a little bit of bread. But in all your ways, is not a chance. And he'll make you pass too. Here we go. That was verse 9, by the way. Everybody say page 2. I got 55 more to go. You'll be all right. You'll get there. You'll get there. Here goes. Now, verse 14 of chapter 6 of John is very interesting because I've not heard anybody ever preach on this one. But it's very interesting what he had to say. He said, after the people saw the signs that Jesus performed, what did he do? He fed, he fed 5,000 plus people. They saw the signs that he did, and the Bible says that surely this is a prophet. Boy, did they miss it there? And he said, uh, who is to come into the world? And Jesus, knowing what they had intended to do and come and make him king by force, he did what? He went to the mountain. Went away. They went right back to their stinking thinking. As soon as Jesus feeds the 5,000, watch this. You think that that would be enough to you say what? In all your ways, acknowledge him. But they did still have men acknowledge him. I'm almost done. Amen. Oh, y'all didn't say it, right? We're not going to start all over. This is difficult. Let's try this one more time. Maybe I need to slow it down and explain it. The stick goes up and you say, Amen. It comes down on his feet. It's pretty simple. We, uh, we have a shirt back there that says the same thing. And this lady came to our table last week and she's like, I don't know why you'd say amen to a stick. Yeah. I said, uh, can somebody help that lady right there, please? That's a loaded question right there. We ain't saying amen to a stick. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. Now, um, in that verse 14, notice that they were going to try to do what? Make him king. Make him king. They still didn't acknowledge him that he was the king. 
See, so you can go to church. You can have all the fancy attire. You can have all the lights, smoke, whatever it is that you have. But watch this. If you don't acknowledge God and acknowledge him as a king, then he is not your king. Here we go. They went right back to their stinking thinking. They developed a plan, man, to, to put Jesus in power when he was what? Already in power. You see, uh, I remember when the Lord told me to build that college, and he told me to build that college. You know what the first thing I said to Jesus was when he told me to build that college? I said, Jesus, I don't have enough money. You know what he said to me? I didn't ask if you had any money. I asked you to build a college. So for five years, I went around asking people for money. Guess how much money came in? Not one penny. And one day, out of the blue, we get done with the concert, I get inside my truck pasture, and this lady had given us an envelope, and opened up the envelope that, that, that night, and I thought it said $2,500. So I, I emailed it to my wife and said, honey, this lady gave $2,500, make sure you get all her information, amen, put her on the newsletter, amen, let her know what we're doing. And she started crying, and she said, baby, that don't say $2,500. It says $25,000. I'm like, who gives people 25000 like me? I mean, would you give a check for me for 25000 Most people would not. I mean, when I was unsaved, I had to rob you to get 10 bucks out of your pocket. Next thing I know, people started walking up to me and giving me checks for 10000 15000 You know, watch this. We had a plumber come. This plumber came $50 an hour. That's pretty cheap, right, for a plumber? Come on, somebody. And he said, brother, don't worry about it. $50 an hour. At the end of the week, I'm sweating trying to pay this guy. Come on, somebody. I'm seeking the Lord now because this guy was there day and night, Pastor. Day and night. 10 o'clock at night, he's still there. I'm like, Jesus, hey, this guy's not got a paycheck. I said, Jesus, I don't know if you took a look at the bank account lately. Remember? But you need to help me out. So on Friday, I come to pay him. You know what he says to me? Every time I walk out of this building, I hear a voice in my head says, Don't take any money from me. I said, You heard from Jesus. That's the Lord right there. You hear from the Lord. You obey the Lord now. You obey that Lord, Jesus. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they told me I would never be able to build that college. They told me, give up, my dream. 17 months fighting with city, presuming. Yeah. Telling me all kinds of things. Why do we want to help people in the first place? Yeah, they told me that. And it broke my heart. But you know what? Nobody helped me when I was a kid. And now God afforded me an opportunity to help men to become real men of the gospel of Christ. And they didn't like that answer either, but I gave it to them. Now we got our first graduating class. Watch this. Our class, our, our college, watch this. It's free. You don't pay one penny. You come there for one year. If you're a male 18 and over, amen, and you want to get, I mean, I'm talking something. We're going to get, we're going to shove some Jesus down. We're broken on somebody. You, you won't get Jesus. Four days a week, we're in biblical studies. At the end of that year, amen, you graduate with your associate's degree. Yes, you do. We give you a ministerial license, amen, and we set you used to preach the gospel in a way that wins souls for the kingdom of God. Amen? amen. All right. I'm almost done. I got about three minutes left. I'm here. I'm here. I'm trying. I'm trying here. Here we go. Last page. Here we say last page. <laughs> Y'all sweating on that one. Here we go. Matthew 7, 24. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them, acknowledges them, may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, amen, and slammed against that house, and yet did not fall. Why? Because he acknowledged God in all of his ways. But in verse 26, everyone who hears uh, these words of mine and does not act on them, does not acknowledge them, they are like a foolish man who builds his house, and when the rain came, it blew it down, and it suffered a great loss. Notice that both of them had a house. That got news for you. Everybody starts out with a house. But it's the way we build it that makes the importance of that house. In closing, in conclusion, whatever y'all want to put together, I don't know how y'all end it here around here. Some people just preach and they never stop, you know. It's like, hey man, we didn't ask for a revival, brother. Yeah, well, we need a revival. Hello? We turned off of our if we turned our, our Facebook off and got in his book, man, we changed the world. Mm -hmm. If you if you carried your Bible like you carried your phone, amen. Come on, somebody, you got some Jesus now. I'm there for real, Dick. I mean, yeah, you, how, let's just be honest. If you forget your phone, amen, it don't matter. What you, I'm trying to die. I gotta get my phone, man. I gotta get my phone. I mean, you know. <laughs> so 
some of y'all laugh at me if you know it's me. Come on, somebody. Yeah, that's how we need to treat the word of God. We need to treat it every day, holding it closely, acknowledging it. Here we go. And he says right here, uh, well, that's what I wrote. Um, when it comes up, um, you know, when we come up with our own ideas and we, and we try to put things together, man, we're just building it on the sand. No solid foundation. And we need to acknowledge him. And watch this. An hour on Sunday and an hour on Wednesday is not acknowledging God. It's the rest of the week that we need to acknowledge him. You see, you can go your whole life fishing on the boat and never catch him. Because you fished on the wrong side of the boat. Jesus told him to put it on the other side of the boat. They acknowledged him. Now watch this. I don't believe Pastor that Peter, when he did that, his name was Simon at that time. But I don't believe that Simon did it out of obedience. I think he just did it out of, I'm about to show this man that he ain't no fish. We fished all night long. We didn't catch nothing. And Jesus said, put it on the other side of the boat. And what happened, amen? They had to have extra men come and get all the fish. Because why? When you acknowledge Jesus, he will bless your life. Come on. That's good. I got to close, man. It's 846. I went a minute over. But I don't apologize. But just like Philip, God had already had made a provision for him. God has already made a provision for us to do exactly what he needs to do when we acknowledge him. Brother, can you come here and just place him? I'm sorry, I forgot to ask him to do it. I should have asked before. I should have been professional. You know, get that professional degree. Just to let y'all know, man, I went back to college. I sure did. Got my associate's degree and got my doctorate degree. It sticks up on the wall. That's all it does. That's all it does. It, it doesn't do anything. The Bible requires action. You know what's more action than anything else? I don't know if you know this or not, but the, you know, let all your ways in that. I, I just want to let you know something. To comprehend God's word, the word comprehensive or comprehend. It means the truth. It's when we comprehend that truth in all of our ways, amen, that God can truly, truly change the things in our life and readjust what we've been thinking because we've been thinking, thinking for too long. You know, we think that God can't use somebody that comes up in here all tatted out and all messed up or whatever the case may be or alcoholics or drunks or whatever it is that, you know, that, that they're going through. Like I said, I got news for you. God can use anybody. If God, if God was the donkey, I got news for you. I do not want to show up in heaven and there's the donkey. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I outreached you, boy. Ah. Uh. You know, that would be a mess to be all known in all of heaven that that dude right there, amen, was outreached by a donkey. I don't want to be that guy. I want to hear them very words. Well done, good and faithful servant. And you enjoy my rest. Y'all got it as you close your eyes. Father, I realize in this type of setting that on a Tuesday night that everybody is probably saved, but it could be possible that somebody's not saved. And I, I would hate to miss an opportunity to see somebody be led to Christ. And so, Lord, I'm not going to call them to the front. I'm not going to point them out. I'm not going to embarrass them. But I am going to ask if that's you tonight and you know that you have not acknowledged God in your life. And tonight you're ready to give it to you your life to him. If that's you, would you slip up your hand that I may see that there might be one. I just want to make sure everybody's safe. Thank you for being honest. Jesus left the 99 for one. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? If you say, Eddie, I don't care how you put your words, man. Lately, I have not been acknowledging him in all my ways. Tonight's message was truly for me. I need to change some things. I need to acknowledge you more in what I'm doing. If that's you, just slip up your hand for me. Just keep them up for just a second. Just give us a second. Keep them up. Keep them up. We're almost done. Keep them up. You may put your hands down. Thank you for being with us. We're going to pray together as a family because of that one person that wanted to accept Jesus. And so that means we pray loud. We pray out of our mouth. Our neighbor hears our voice. So he can feel like a family. Say it with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. tonight in this place. I surrender to you. I give to you my sin. That separated me. But you paid for me on that cross. And now you forgive me. And I am born again. Now help me and teach me. Give me wisdom 
and knowledge. And thank you, Father, that I got purpose. In Jesus' name, we said amen. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. Eddie, come here and sit with me. Let's sit down here a few minutes. You enjoyed us tonight? Amen. I, I had, uh, you know, I've heard of Eddie a couple of years ago, as a matter of fact, and we were almost in Albuquerque, uh, j Bo and I riding scooters. But, uh, man, tonight was like such a refreshing for me. You know, I would felt tears in church, maybe because I'm the one up here preaching, watching y'all. But uh, just just to be able to see your passion, and 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 I know what it's like I evangelized for years, and to be able to continue that, and and you know, and I'm sitting here going, I, I sense the realness, uh, the uh, the joy, all those cool things. I talked to my daughter this week. My daughter's in in corrections. She's a correctional uh, officer in uh, Bent County in Colorado, and uh, I asked Mandy about uh, prison reform. I said, Mandy, what, what do you think about prison reform? You know, it's kind of a hot topic. And she said, Dad, well, we're, you know, we're not there to punish the prisoners. The court's already done it. A lot of them shouldn't be in there as long as they are right now. They should have they already gotten out. But we don't have no choice in that, you know. And, uh, we, you know, we talked about the gospel and, and how the things could change in, in the prisons. And knowing that you're going into those prisons over and over and over again. I was, I was incarcerated for a little while. The church knows that. You know, it's another I'm ashamed of. But I preached every night while I was in jail. And I remember a, a minister came in from the outside to preach. And I, I stood against him and the guards and told him to get him out of there because he was so self-righteous. He was uh, demeaning, condescending. And I heard him for just a little bit. I heard him one time. And I, would, I said, and I, I had enough clout by that time to say, you can't come back in to my jail cell and preach to my cell. He's a shot caller. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And I, and I had some that protected me while I was there. You know, and I wasn't there for a long time, but long enough to just get a little taste of what these guys were going through. And so much so when I left, the prison guards thanked me for coming. But to know what you're doing, you know, know that you're in for quite a uh, period of time. And uh, I just want you to kind of just kind of let our hair down just a little bit because it, you're in a different world than many, many church folk are. Can you explain a little bit about, uh, a little bit more what you do? Um, you know, the prison population, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's 2.2 million people incarcerated in the United States. And, um, you know, not that I'm a Moses, but God said to me, Eddie, I want you to be like a Moses to a forgotten people. And so when we go in these prisons, and this is over and over and over and over and over and over and over, um, you know, we, we average about 380 prisons a year. That's what we've been doing for all these years. And, um, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We, 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 we do a lot. And so when we go in these prisons, a lot of these guys that have never been to church at all, they won't even go to church. But when they hear about our ministry coming, they come anyway. And um, I guess the, the best one that I have ever been in is uh, we went to a prison in uh, um, J.D. Connolly unit. And we got there, and when we got there, they told us that we could not come in. What's that? That's here in this state, Texas. It's where the Texas 7th state. Okay. And um, they told us that we could not come in because they didn't have enough guards because it was, uh, um, what's that weekend where everybody goes? Uh, short on staff, it's, it's, it's the spring break. And so uh, they told us to leave. And I got out in the parking lot and the guy, he says, Eddie, they told us to leave. I said, well, I ain't, I'm, I'm not leaving. We're going there and preaching. He said, no, you're not. They told us to leave. I said, man, don't you pack your stuff up, brother. I said, I'm going to pray. You're going to go back inside there and you're going to talk to the captain. So we prayed, went back there, and the captain told him, get out of here, you, you can't come in, you gotta leave. He walked back out to me, told me again, he said, hey man, they told us to leave. I said, man, you're talking to Satan, dude. Look, we need to talk to Jesus, let's pray again. And so we prayed right there in the parking lot. They're telling us to put our stuff in the, in, in, in the band, Pastor. I'm like, no, no, we're praying. We started praying, and all of a sudden, man, this car pulled up, 7.30 in the morning. I, in 28 years of ministry, I've never seen a major 7.30 in the morning. And there's a major pulled up, and I said, go talk to him. You want to go talk to that man? That man said, I'll give you 30 minutes. I said, Major, if you gave me 15, I'd be fine. I just want the guys to know that somebody loves them on the outside, and it's called Jesus. We went inside there. We did the concert. Pastor, this is no joke. I did about three songs. That was it, and I preached real fast. This dude came up to me after, and he shook my hand. He said, thank you. And uh, we walked out in the parking lot. Now, I've never seen this, but the chaplain was running through the parking lot, 
and yelling at me. Eddie! Eddie, stay! Stay! I thought there was somebody in my box. I'm thinking, why is he running after us? And so he runs up to me and he says, did that man tell you what happened? I said, no, sir. And he said, um, that man was released and he thought he was going to go to the showers. But when he got over to the church service, the guard told him, no, you got to go to the church service. He said, I don't want to go to church. I'm not a Christian. He said, I don't care where you think you're going. You're going to church service right now until I get this stuff straightened out. When I played this song called, um, I'll play it tomorrow night, called Carry Me Home, um, the song about quitting, giving up. This man literally got up, walked inside the chaplain's office, and this is a true story, pulled out a knife and put it on the table and told the chaplain, I was going to kill myself in the shower today. He said, when I heard that song, I knew that there was a Jesus and that he loved me and that he cared for me and that I didn't even take my life. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. He got in trouble for putting that knife in that table. I, I guarantee you right now. But I guarantee you one thing for sure. We're going to see him in heaven. Amen. 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 I've been reading uh, so many of your testimonies online. You've been... We've been preaching on overcomer, overcomer. As a matter of fact, our theme for the conference is overcome in 2020. We just want to overcome this year right now, get through it. But I want to thank you for continually social media, because that's good stuff to read. And I'm reading things about you that I had no idea. I mean, I'm going, are you kidding me? You know, uh, one lady in our church, uh, one pound baby boy. Uh, the, the others talked about the deaths of family members and how they overcome drugs and alcohol and things. And I'm just reading, reading. I'm thinking, God, thank you. Thank you. Because this is what we need to keep doing. And remind ourselves, you know, we've often said the little country church is a place where misfits fit. And, you know, when you are uh, a misfit, like there a lot of us, we've, we all got a story. You all got a song. And, I, and, Eddie, one of the things I liked about your stuff is your songs were your stories. Your songs are what you've, you've lived and what you preach. And that's why they connected with me. That's why I hit because I, I, I was like you. When I got in church and I heard the uh, ringing in the sheaves, I thought the same thought. I ain't saved enough for this church. You know, I just, I, I, I couldn't hardly handle it because I liked a little bit of uh, rock in my roll, you know, and I still do. So, uh, guys, on your uh, uh, pews there, there's uh, offered envelopes. Please tonight give over and above. Make sure that we can bless Eddie when he heads out of here. Uh, we're just... Uh, we're one stop for wherever he goes, but I think we need to have him back again. What do you think? I'm going to bring this man back here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we will we'll have him back tomorrow night in New Caney, and we want all of you to show up in New Caney tomorrow night. Because watch this. I can leave here on a Sunday morning after preaching an 8.30 service. By the time I get to New Caney, the sermon has changed. Amen. It's a whole other sermon by the time I hit 10.30. So if you even came out and double dipped, on Sunday, it's going to be a different sermon almost every time. As a matter of fact, I usually, I, should, I could have said that different. I could have done that. And then sometimes I get there and go, I can't preach no better than that right there. I might as well quit and just put it on the overhead. We thank you guys for watching online. Make sure you grab your offering envelope right now, everybody that can. I want to see you moving. If you're faking, I don't care. Just fake it. Just act like you're leaning forward and getting a tithe envelope. Amen. If you're working, you're going to do it on your phone. You know, I know many of you have your giving apparatus on your phone. You can give through your phone. But uh, make sure and just put it uh, just you can write down the side a special offer to Eddie B Prison ministry anything like that. We'll make sure that uh, Eddie gets a good offering before he leaves stop back there and get a t-shirt Amen, Absolutely. and you, you would sure. you happen to have any CDs? Um, I, I, I just have a few up there. I just have a few. I, I have my new one. Not a perfect Christian. Not a perfect Christian. Yes, yeah, yes. I know a few of those. Yes, yes. That's in the back. Yeah, All right. Yeah. I hang out with one every day. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah, he's the man in the mirror. I see in the morning.